uh, in previous sessions uh, when we are discussing about making decisions uh, investment decision consumption consumption decisions saving decisions uh, there was an implicit assumption what i made clear uh, from the very beginning that is uh, there is no risk or there is no uncertainty we are just considering intertemporal transfer of our wealth so we ignore the risk uh, however uh, in reality uh, when you expect return or investors expect return from their wealth the expect return uh, at least for two reasons uh, or you can say their return is a function of at least two factors uh, one is uh, deferring their consumption uh, for a specific period of time and another one is uh, for taking risk uh, when they are deferring consumption in a time uh, because there is no certainty that after uh, after a certain period of time, that means our, uh, in our example, the future point of time, uh, one, uh, there is no certainty that the amount of consumption what you are expecting today will be available exactly in that amount. So there is uncertainty associated with it. So in our uh, decision making, obviously we need to address the uncertainty or risk associated with making any decision so uh, if i like to begin uh, the today's session uh, you need to be familiar or i think you are very much familiar with the uh, some statistical concepts uh, which i will mention uh, after this but uh, in uh, today's session we will try to know that uh, how investors make decision uh, when uh, there are risks associated with the decision or uh, risks are associated with the outcome of the decision and uh, uh, what kind of uh, what kind of assumptions we need to make uh, when we are considering or when we are assuming that rational investor make decision okay uh, what I was stressing the point that investors uh, can't ignore uh, consideration of a uh, consideration of risk because the decision is associated with risk. So our key question for today is that uh, when investors face the decision in which there is a possibility that. Uh, so some certainty, some uncertainty, or the outcome is not certain. In that case, how investors make decision? That is our key question. Uh, so uh, from your statistics course, uh, you are familiar with the probability concept that when we are making a decision in which there is a risk associated, uh, we need to apply the machineries we learn from the probabilities. Uh, so uh, we uh, right now for for our session you don't need to have a very advanced knowledge in probabilities but uh, just for a refresher you need to have some concepts in your mind that is uh, if uh, we are considering a decision in which uh, there are several outcomes uh, all outcomes, all possible outcomes, we try to define uh, by the uh, by this notation that is omega, uh, which indicates all uh, possible outcome, and it is double struck f, uh, which indicates that uh, uh, you are very familiar with the concept of event. So if we count all possible events, uh, we are including that uh, in this uh, notation and you know very well for each possible outcome or for considering each event we need to assign or we need to have objective or subjective assignment of probability measure uh, by capital p we uh, denote the probability number so if i ask you and it has been asked to you for many times uh, in your statistics class that uh, if you uh, roll a dice, there are, uh, if I ask you about the omega, 
That means there are six possible outcome which has been written here. And uh, if you collect all possible events, that means it can be uh, event of all odd numbers or event of all even numbers. You can include all of the event uh, with double struct F. And if I ask you what is the probability of uh, getting a certain outcome, for example, three, after rolling a dice for a single time, you can uh, find out it easily uh, as the outcome are very much defined and the number of uh, the omega is uh, clearly defined. So if I ask you about the probability of this event, that means the event uh, which is asking the event for uh, even numbers, you can easily calculate this. So you will try by yourself that if I roll a dice for n times, how can uh, do it yourself? Okay, how can you find out the omega? How can you uh, what shall be the double struck f? Uh, the possible collection uh, collection of all possible events, and how can we get the probability? You will try by yourself to write down uh, the values of this. Uh, notations uh, on the right side. But if I ask you right now, uh, have you seen this kind of uh, roulette in your life? Or yes, have you played this roulette in your life? No, sir. No, sir. No? Not a single person. There is no legal enforcement in this class, uh, sorry, uh, legal authority in this class so that uh, you will get caught. So you can express uh, whether you have played or not, whatever the for whatever purpose. Okay, uh, if anyone does not play the roulette or has not played the roulette in his or her life, uh, he or she has probably seen such kind of roulette, uh, probably in some village fair. Uh, there are some uh, circle like this, which is very related to, uh, which is very similar to roulette, but not exactly. Kind of, uh, kind of the, there's a stick, there's a stick here. And if you if you try to put some taka, for example, five or six, you get the chance to uh, use the wheel and uh, to move the wheel by yourself. And there are some rewards here, like soap, uh, like uh, one pack of uh, Benson or uh, some uh, 10 candies or uh, uh, some some body spray have you seen such kind of yes, uh, game in your village here yes sir we have all we all played this you game. all played this or you all have seen this okay so uh, uh, the roulette game is very similar to this game what you play uh, in village fair. So what is our discussion here right now that is you can easily uh, define uh, if I ask you uh, what is the omega of this roulette game, how can you uh, de define the possible outcome. Uh, if uh, I think uh, the outcomes, the numbers here, uh, actually the outcome are not uh, this exact number, but this uh, number indicates something you need to, uh, you, you have a chance to win. So if I ask you to define the omega for this roulette game, how can you define? 
uh, we need to start from one or you we need to start from zero zero sir zero okay fine zero, sir. yes sir, zero okay uh, we can finish it in 36 or 37 30, 36, 36, 36, 36, okay, fine, 36, okay, if I ask you about the possible number of events or we alternatively define this term as sigma field, okay, it is alternatively known as sigma field, uh, you can list down all possible events you are interested uh, uh, from this state, this space, okay? Uh, alternatively, we define this omega as a state of space. It is very scientific term or mathematical term or engineering concept, uh, which includes all, all, all possible events that can happen uh, in your decision or that can possibly happen. Uh, it can, uh, sometimes you can define all possible states of a space. Uh, however, in reality, it is not very easy to define it clearly. Then uh, if I ask you, what is the probability, for example, of getting uh, this three? Uh, if I if I uh, move or if I uh, move this wheel or move this roulette for single time, what is the probability of getting three? One over some number. Oh, one over thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. Very good. Okay. Sir, sir, 1 over 38. Sir, 38, 38. sir. Zero. How? Sir, 2 uh, zero was zero. Okay. Okay, fine. So, will it be 38 or 37? 38. Sure? 38. Okay. So, if there was uh, one zero, it would be 37. However, as there are uh, two zeros, as there are two zeros, the probability changes, okay? So if I ask you about a uh, lottery, okay? The lottery is such that uh, if you win a lottery uh, based on some uh, rolling a dice or uh, tossing a coin, okay, if you get the expected number or the predetermined number, you will get the outcome of 100 taka, otherwise you will lose 100, okay. So it is possible to display or express this, uh, express the probability in terms of cumulative distribution function. I'm very confident that you probably, uh, you have learned this concept from your statistics one or business statistics. Uh, from the very first chapter, you learned about the cumulative distribution and from the probability chapter, you learned about the cumulative probability function. So it's nothing, it's just uh, accumulation of all possible events, um, not all possible events, accumulation of the possible events uh, till to a, uh, at least for a certain number. Uh, for example, uh, if you want to ask uh, in uh, the rolling a dice example, 
what is the cumulative probability of getting three the that means you are interested to know uh, the probability of getting one getting two getting three and uh, when you will sum up the probability of getting one getting two and getting three you get the cumulative probability function of getting three or get, getting the number till three okay so we are trying to display the cdf of this lottery uh, here you see the outcome the worst possible outcome is minus 100 I, that means losing 100 not more than that so if you ask me what is the cumulative probability of losing more than 100 that will be certainly zero uh, these are in zero range and if you ask what is the probability of uh, getting plus 100 or uh, so, sorry uh, more than 100 that is also zero but if you want to get the ctf of getting the outcome till 100 you can cover the cumulative probability till 100 percent up to 100 but if you ask the cdf of uh, getting till zero it's close to 50 percent or it's approximately 50 percent or, or exactly 50 percent so what we are interested right now that is how can we relate this with the portfolio so the outcome of lottery is a random number by double struck r we are trying to sorry the lottery outcome type by double struck r is it's a lottery outcome we have defined that outcome of the lottery has two possible uh, outcome one is plus 100 another one is minus 100 okay so it, you can easily find out what is the probability of getting uh, getting minus 100 or getting 100 you can easily define this uh, you can easily find out the probability number of getting this okay how can you get you know the objective probability when you have two outcome you will get a probability close to 50 percent because there are two possible outcome so if you like to get the expected outcome the expected outcome of this lottery is close to 50 percent or the probability of getting the expected value of the, uh, from this lottery is 50 percent but this is not the probability graph make it very clear this is not the probability graph this is the probability uh, this is the cumulative probability function we are accumulating the probability of getting till minus 100 till getting zero till getting 100 in this way so when you uh, add all the probability numbers of getting up to minus 100 up to zero up to 100 you can uh, get this kind of diagram uh, which will be known as cumulative probability function or alternatively it is known as cumulative distribution function <clears throat> so in portfolio as like lottery in portfolio we also have random outcome why we are relating the portfolio with the lottery or we are, why we are taking example of lottery economist uh, knows or economists try to identify the investment in stock market or investment in financial market uh, as like lottery why lottery because uh, you have invested a certain amount for example a uh, hundred dollar or thousand taka uh, you don't know what shall be the possible outcome it can uh, be only 10 or it can be 10,000, it can be 500. So all of this outcome, you can say that outcome from the lotteries are random variable and outcome from the portfolio can be also random variable. However, when you construct portfolio, that uh, 
that means uh, in portfolio when i ask you to denote all possible outcome of k number of asset k number of asset one to uh, asset one asset two asset three asset four asset k uh, you will get a set of possible outcome which you can shortly denote as a random outcome and if you try to hold uh, or construct a portfolio by holding a uh, uh, theta unit of asset one theta unit of asset two in this way theta unit of asset k you can at the end of the time you can define your portfolio payoff in this way that means the number of units you invested in a particular asset and the amount of payoff you get from that particular asset and if you sum up all of this payoff in this way you get the portfolio payoff so all portfolio payoff can be written in this way it is a kind of uh, written in a vector form and remember apart from the randomness generated from the outcome uh, generated for the portfolio which is coming from the payoff because the outcome or payoff of individual asset is random the amount of as uh, the amount of or the unit of investment you have purchased for a particular asset the, that means the theta is also influences the outcome of or payoff of your portfolio because if, if it is like that you have invested or uh, if i assume that all assets are uh, uh, all assets are quantitatively or a denomination are uh, very similar if you invest a uh, theta for example four to a particular asset of which outcome is x4 and it is very much uncertain its volatility is very high and you have invested a greater unit of theta in this asset your payoff of the portfolio will be very much uncertain because you have allocated a greater amount of theta in this asset of which uh, volatility is very much high so thing is that uh, when you make decision you need to find out the utility associated with that possible outcome but when you are making the decision in which riskiness is involved you need to consider the probability that means in previous session we are simply summing up uh like this utility from consumption and in this way utility from present uh, future consumption we are simply adding this however uh when these are risky you need to multiply the probability number with the possible outcome so that your utility will not be an certain utility that will also become the expected utility so why you are getting expected utility because the utility from the payoff is not certain why utility from payoff is not certain because payoff itself is has become now a random variable so we need to invite the probability number with the utility now and when we will get the weighted average or probability weighted average of the utility we will get a expected utility number it's not now utility number only but the thing is that uh, a rational investor always tries to maximize his utility and he uh, tries to get an best decision or get a best decision by taking that investment in which his expected utility will be maximum so for some uh, for some reasons investors may end up taking some decision in which he does not have a higher utility or he does not uh, get some adequate utility 
in that case if he makes such a decision in that case that decision will not be rational so in some cases for example uh, you are motivated you are motivated by the television commercials to purchase some products but after using the product or after having the product you realize that it you are not getting that kind of utility what you need to have rather you are mistakenly influenced by the television commercials so in that case that decision when you made to purchase the product is not a rational decision rather you have made a irrational decision so you can ask me that people uh, by and large most of the people make decision irrationally so why we need to learn the rational decision making process the answer is that you are not an individual you need to have a very clear idea in this course we are not the individual who make irrational decision who are biased for behavioral biases rather we are asset managers asset managers cannot be a biased individual asset manager need to have unbiased justification to each and every decision what he or she making so if a asset manager is influenced by behavioral biases that asset manager is not very likely to get a good outcome in his investment and he is very likely to lose his job uh, when the things go in wrong direction so individual prefers to behave irrationally by himself or herself individuals don't want to get or don't want to see that their asset managers or their portfolio managers are making decisions irrationally so individual or institutional investors always always expect that their asset managers need to or their asset managers are certainly making rational decision they are making decision in such a way which maximizes utility of the investors which maximizes utility of the shareholders so if it is found that the asset manager is not making the right decision you can alternatively say that he is not making the right decision because he is not behaving rationally so a rational decision maker uh, when we say that a decision maker is rational we need to define that that person is taking decision in such a way he tries to maximize the utility function of the client could you please stop the microphone from your end so that the noise will not come here okay so a rational asset manager or rational portfolio manager always concentrate to maximize the utility of his individual or of his client or of his institutional client so the thing is that an individual is rational and an individual need to have some satisfies some criteria which we in utility environment we know those assumptions as axiom if that individual satisfies all of this axiom it it is said that 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 individual's preference can be described or can be portrayed by a utility function otherwise not so you need to have a very good idea that what are those axioms and individuals need to satisfy to have a utility function so if i ask you uh, to select uh, an option or select an option out of 3 like this that you have three option one option is you can get 1000 taka interest income by investing in a saving certificate there is no uncertainty associated with it that's why i have not written a probability number here 
and you have second option that is 20% chance of getting 1000 taka from a stock market investment and you have another option 10% uh, chance of getting 1000 taka it is not 10% of 1000 taka you have 10% of getting 1000 taka and you have 20% of getting 1000 taka from a stock market investment so here the percentage is lower because you are investing in a startup business so if i ask you uh, out of you i am asking a person from the participants uh, Uh, Noshat Ayub, are you here? 23135. Noshat Ayub is not with us. Okay, if I ask Minhajir Rahman Joy, are you with us? Minhajir Rahman Joy. Are you listening my voice or this person are not uh, physically present in class? Uh, representatives? Uh, you are listening my voice? Sir, I see, I see. Yes, sir. No, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So I asked two persons there. Sir, we are listening. Sorry? Yes, sir, I have to say that. Okay. So I see uh, some people are virtually present here, not physically present. Uh, on their end. Okay. Uh, Shagor, uh, can you please add that which one you will prefer out of these three? So I will prefer the first one. You will prefer the first one. Yes, uh, if I ask you to make the answer from the utility perspective, why do you think you should prefer the first one? Uh, sir, because uh, the first one uh, is 100% certain, uh, yeah. the second and third one has uncertainty that will uh, decrease my uh, probability uh, and the first one won't decrease uh, the utility. Okay. So, can I tell you that you are a risk averse investors, that's why you get more utility from the certain outcome compared to uncertain outcome? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can say that. Otherwise, if you are a risk lover investor or risk loving investor, your utility function would prefer investing in a startup. You yes, may sir. ask, you may ask, instead of having instead of having so many risk-free options. Why people go for investing in a startup? Why the young entrepreneurs go for investing in a startup even after having 
the so many risk free options the answer is that their utility function gets higher when they get value from a startup rather the value they get from risk free investment because their individual preference is investing in a startup they get more utility by investing in a startup that's why they invest there so i already made the so point this example would be more interesting yeah this example would be more interesting if i get 10% if i have the 10% chance of getting 10000 taka hmm. from investment in startup so yeah. this would be an example more interesting okay that, that can be but uh, for simplicity we are trying to keep this number similar so that you will not get uh, the difficulty in comparison so to make this number same we have cap the number in 1000 so what the point i try to make that the startup investors get more utility because they are the risk lover they get more utility from investment in a startup that's why they invest there so a rational decision maker he can be risk lover or he can be risk uh, risk avoider or he can be risk neutral also so they are all individual utility functions are different but matter is that uh, a rational decision maker uh, need to satisfy some assumptions or some axioms so that he can define or she can define his preferences in through a utility function okay uh, sorry uh, through a utility function otherwise it is not possible to find out or to come up with a utility function if you ask me that whether irrational investor has a utility function the answer is no because if you uh, rank the decision of irrational investors in terms of utility function you will get some utility numbers but you will see that he is not making the decision in a way that maximizes the utility so we define utility in such a way that that person will try to maximize the utility so that is the purpose of a rational individual or rational investor so let's look at what are the axioms an individual must satisfy to have his or her utility function so these axioms uh, are subtle or this axioms if you don't get the axioms very clearly or if you can't satisfy this axioms you are not the person to have a utility function or you cannot apply the utility function to that person who don't satisfy this kind of axioms so first of all the completeness axiom so what we need uh, what we Sir. mean by this would you like to tell anything yeah in listening sir amader axiom axiom ta ki ar ekta ekta explain korben ami axiom ta actually bujhchi na i just have started explaining the axiom that uh, axioms are axioms are the some foundational assumptions some foundational assumptions based on which utility function works if this axioms of the choice or assumptions of the assumptions of the utility function don't work or don't satisfy utility function uh, utility function cannot work or utility function cannot exist there okay so yeah sir uh फुलफिल the thing is that uh, when asset manager makes decision when asset manager makes decision what i already have mentioned that asset manager needs to formalize 
the individual preferences through some utility function. So, yes, sir. and it's not like that. That thousand individuals are managed by an uh, managed by an asset manager. It is not like that. That thousand investors, thousand investors are irrational. Okay, and yes, sir. Keep it in your mind that asset manager does not fulfill the demand of irrational investor. Asset manager does not work for the irrational investor. Asset manager works for the rational investor. So how asset manager works for the rational investors? Though most of the investors are irrational, their utility or their preferences in somehow can be loosely defined not precisely defined can be loosely defined through some utility function okay in a strict okay. sense in a strict sense they don't have the utility function however they know that if i have for example if i have investment in google or if i have investment in uh, apple an investor an investor must know or investor know very and uh, an investor knows very well that why he is preferring google over apple yes sir investors prefers google over apple there should be some valid reason do, do you think that investors believe such a way or investors randomly yes, pick google or apple no sir mm, what do you think they are rational in this matter. Okay. So when you are an in investor, in a strict sense, you may not satisfy all of the exams, but you have some something inside yourself by which you rank the preferences, by which you can express your preferences. But in terms of uh, in terms of simplistic function, uh, we may not have some simplistic function. Okay. In reality, the utility utility function can be quite complex, but for reading purpose, what we do, we need to simplify the assumptions. Okay, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. If I ask you, for example, uh, forget about investor. If I ask you uh, why you prefer, for example, uh, University of Dhaka relative to your local university. Uh, is it by choice by a random? Is it a random choice? That you, uh, you also have got selected here. No, sir. And you also have got selected here and you tossed a coin. So the co flip side, you flipped a coin that it is now University of Dhaka and you have taken admission here. Is it such a way? No, it sir. is not such a way. Though investors are irrational, they have to some extent rationality in making decisions. Okay, but in a strict sense, they are not uh, in uh, in very simplistic sense. We say that investors are irrational or investors are rational. Rather, investors' decisions can be defined as a spectrum between rationality and the irrationality they are sometimes rational they are sometimes irrational or you can say their decision is a mixture of something of which some portion can you, you can say rational or some portion you can say irrational in that way there is no concept like completely irrational or completely rational because we are the human being and we have uh, we are limited by our capability, by the information availability, by our psychological decision making. So we have shortage of the capabilities, what we need for making a perfect rational decision. So uh, it, the term is known as bounded rationality. Investors are bounded by their, limi uh, by their limitation of having the resources, what are essentials for making the rational decision. Okay. So first of all, the first axiom, what we need to stress right now, that is the completeness. 
what does it mean for example uh don't get hung up with the notation uh what we are showing here that is kind of a standard mathematical notation you need to write for what purposes to standardize or to express something in a standard form so first of all let's try to understand what we try to mean by completeness so and the individual must have some individual some of his own preferences why he prefer investing in tesla or why prefers investing in neo okay you know these two companies tesla and neo sir uh, i know tesla but i haven't heard of neo okay so you know very well why tesla is popular or why tesla is a kind of uh, growth stock nowadays and neo is known as neo is known as chinese tesla okay neo is known as chinese tesla so i invested in these two stocks when i started making investment in a uh, global stock so in my portfolio i had tesla i also had uh neo so neo what i mentioned neo is known as chinese tesla so uh if you ask me uh how much i invested in tesla how much i invested in neo i was not very clear regarding the fundamental number or the financial statements of each of this company however i was aware of their business in very uh very primary uh kind of information that i was aware of their business okay but when i was making investment i preferred tesla over neo so why i preferred investment in tesla because uh i thought that tesla is very well known and tesla is number one in producing the fuel free automobiles and neo is also doing the same kind of business but neo is uh less known to me so why neo is less known to me because you are we uh, you are aware of the fact that our media or our communication media is uh us biased or it is biased toward the us and european economies okay our international media so the amount of information i get about tesla and the amount of information i get uh for neo all of these are uh, both of these are listed in nyse but the amount of information i have for tesla and the amount of information for neo are quite not same so i thought that tesla would be better compared to neo so i had some of my own some of my individual preferences why i prefer tesla over neo so i have not mentioned anything that all investors use or all managers use like uh the return historical return or the risk premium or the correlation covariance i have not considered any of these things so based on my individual preferences i prefer tesla over neo so that is the concept of completeness so let's try to be brief that out of all possible investment or out of all possible uh, outcomes or decision it is, an individual can rank among the decisions or among the investment or among the lotteries or simplistically if you like to say okay so it it is not like that an investor can't say that i don't know why i prefer tesla over neo or i don't know why i prefer neo over tesla 
So you need to have a very well-defined preferences between two alternatives or among the alternatives which are available to you. That is the concept of completeness, okay? So from your personal life, if I ask you that uh, you have two dishes available, one dish is biryani and another dish is uh, plain rice with some with some platter like uh, like kebab or ki kind of some rezala. Okay. So if I ask everyone, you have some preferences. Some will prefer biryani over this, or some will prefer this over biryani. So if I ask you that why you are preferring biryani? If your answer is such that, I don't know why I prefer biryani. Okay? It cannot be such thing. You must have some preferences over other alternatives based on some of your own criteria, based on your own, some of your individual criteria, some of your own preferences. So it's completely individual, completely individual. I have said I have preferred Tesla over new. You can say you are indifferent, sorry. You are indifferent between Tesla and new, or you can say I love China. That's why I love new. Okay, it's completely individual preference decision. Okay, the matter is that how can you uh, write your preferences? So when you write this, for example, you have write in this way, it is meaning that you are preferring Tesla over Neo, or you are indifferent. That means your preference is a kind of weak preference. Uh, this term is known as tilde, okay? But if you write in this way, Tesla, Tilda, Neo, that means you are indifferent between Tesla and Neo. However, if you write the opposite, you are preferring uh, Neo over Tesla. But if you write in this way, Tesla uh, greater than Neo, it indicates that you strictly prefer. You strictly prefer, you strongly prefer Tesla over Neo. So I think you have got the concept of completeness or the axiom of completeness. The second one, which one is transitivity, transitivity. make it clear this is number one, this is number two. You can't say transitivity first, then completeness second, not in that way. Okay, you need to maintain the order. So if it is such that you have satisfied the completeness, you can talk about the transitivity. So, so let me give you an example of transitivity in this way. For example, uh, you prefer, uh, let's assume that you have already satisfied the completeness axiom. In that case, you need to check the transitivity. So transitivity, in other words, it means that you are internally consistent in your preferences. So how can we understand in our example? It is like that, for example, uh, you prefer investing in Square Pharma over uh, Beximco Pharma and you also prefer investing in Beximco Pharma over Orion Pharma. If it is such that, can we write that you prefer Square Pharma over Orion Pharma? Yes, sir. However, if you tell something that I prefer Square Pharma over Beximco and Beximco over Orion Pharma, but I prefer Orion Pharma 
over a squared pharma? It cannot be. Okay. In that case, your decisions are not consistent. Your decisions are not consistent. Okay. And the third axiom, what we like to make, that is the independence. So let me give you an example so that you will get the concept by yourself and get the mathematical notations also. That is, uh, for example, uh, you have two choices, kind of. Uh, you prefer uh, visiting to Jomuna Future Park for some of your shopping over Boshundara. Okay, it is very much clear. You prefer going to Jomuna Future Park to Boshundara, but if it is such that on the day when you are visiting uh, rainfall is started, rainfall. Okay. What does it mean? It means that it is a, some kind of third factor. It is kind of some third factor which has now been added to your preferences. So now you can't say as a rainfall has started, I will prefer to go to Boshundara rather than going to Jomuna when rainfall has started. Do we change our decision in this way? No, sir. Huh? Do yes, we sir. not? Yes, sir. I, I'm not saying should we. I'm saying do we. Yes, sir. We change. We make or we change We change our decision in this way, but it is not a rational thinking. So when you have preferences of Jomuna over Boshundara. A third factor can't influence your choice. A third factor can't influence your preference. So uh, your preference is independent over any third choice, any third factor, which will be added to a same amount with this one and this one. You can't switch between these two when a third factor is added at an equal amount okay so sir ekhane ekta question ache yeah so let's say ami jokhon amader economy sir stable position e ache ba growing uh, growing position e ache oi time e ami ekta cyclical business e invest korte prefer korbo rather than ekta mane non cyclical uh, business e ekhon amader economy jodi recession e pore jay so, I'm a prefer to go to the business in the scope. The counter returns are stable. Third so, not a third factor regarding our decision change. Course, sir. So, it is a result of a person. If it is like that, the third factor, uh, third factor is something completely additional. Yes, third sir. factor is completely something additional. Okay. If it is such that uh if it is such that the a is greater than b or your stable or stable business is preferred over cyclical business and when economy is changing when economic condition is changing it can be such that uh your preference itself can change. Your preference itself can change. Yes, sir. Okay. But it's not like that. Regardless of this, we need to think from here. 
regardless of this regardless of the economic stability or economic cyclicity which one you prefer which one you prefer so let's say i, I prefer yeah. a yeah that preference cannot be changed for a third factor okay if the preference changes if the preference changes in that case you are not following the independence axiom of utility function if it breaks down so the third factor the impact is that i ignore it so to say the preference pura pura upside down kore dite pare yeah but we are ignoring here to uh, understand the utility or not understand the utility to operationalize the utility that means the third factor can't influence your individual preferences of one option over another if it changes if your preferences changes for third factor in that case okay. this axiom is not applicable for you so does that make me irrational i have not said it is something irrational it is kind of uh if you if it is such that you have this you have this but you don't have this you can't ignore this okay sir. okay we are following uh completeness first transitivity first independence first okay the thing is okay. that we make irrational decision because we don't follow this kind of axiom sometimes in our life okay sometimes in our life okay <clears throat> and then uh if i ask you uh, uh about the continuity continuity is such a uh, kind of axiom is like that for example uh you have two option uh sorry you have three option uh one has very high outcome for example that is a another one has very low outcome that is c uh, sorry that is c that is c and another option that has an outcome between a and c that means it is kind of option in which you will have some uh payoff which is in between a and c so if it is such that there is a certain probability for this high outcome and there is some certain probability for this uh, very low outcome it is possible to find out an outcome by combining these two by combining these two a and c to get an outcome to get an outcome expected outcome which is equal to the outcome of the option in, uh, which was your middle uh, which was in your mid, uh, middle option or which was uh, in between a and c however if i like to argue against it you are already uh, preferring a greater uh, a over b you are preferring b over c if in extreme sense i take the probability number 1 for a it becomes zero in that case the combination of a and c is giving you the outcome equal to a so can that combination become equal to b it cannot be equal because you already have yeah. sorry answer if jinishta ji hote sir two dui combination a hote parbe jinishta abar b likhe den you have taken probability for a 100% percent. 
In that case, what is the probability for C? Zero. Zero. So when you have combined this outcome with the probability of this kind of one and zero, the outcome is not equal to outcome of A. Yes, sir. The outcome will become equals to A. So it cannot be equal to B. It cannot be equal to B. But what is the axiom? Axiom is saying something that it is possible to get some probability number for A and C in such a way. If you get that probability number, you can get some payoff you can get some payoff by combining this and this by some probability number, which is equal to the outcome of B, okay? So that is the concept of continuity. So sure. it's, uh, it's very similar to the indifference curve. You see, that means uh, it is possible to get here by combining these two. Okay, all are lying in same line. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Professor, I am probability A more than zero percent and less than fifty percent. Dhori. So, we have A outcome or B outcome. Professor, I am actually When you are taking something P which is uh, which is uh, greater than zero, but less than 50, okay? Less than 50, but greater than zero. You are, in that case, none of the A and C is getting 100% weight. A is getting some weight, C is getting some weight. That means you are getting a mix of A and C. Is it not? Yes. Okay. So, if, uh, indiv uh, if an individual... Huh. Mixture of A and C, not the summation of A and C, mixture, weighted average of A and C. So, I'm going to say that the probability is 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 that it's not like that. You don't know uh, what is the outcome of B. You don't know exactly what is the numerical value of B. You don't know what is the exact value of A and C. So to get the probability number, to get the probability number uh, of, uh, of A and C, you need to have something, uh, you need to have some equation by which you can equalize the combination of A and C with the outcome of B. Okay. If it is like that, okay. you are, uh, if B is like that, uh, B is giving you a outcome, which is exactly in between A and C. In that case, the probability numbers are 50%, uh, 50%. But I have not said that the B is exactly between A and C. Have I said such thing? No, sir. Okay. So it is said that the if uh, individual, if an individual satisfies all of these four function four uh, axioms, what I already have said, that person preferences, individual functions or individual preferences can be described by a utility function. Otherwise, it is not possible, okay? So if you 
uh, a rational decision maker and if you ask me why i prefer tesla over neo i need to prove you that i have got expected utility from tesla which is greater than expected utility from neo that's why i preferred tesla over neo okay so you need to prove your preferences by uh, utility so otherwise uh, you are not making the decision rationally so mm -hmm. if your asset manager is preferring a certain stock for example walton over singer he needs to prove that the utility of you as an investor from uh, investment in walton is greater than the expected utility you will achieve from the investment in singer but matter is that if i uh, i showed you some utility function in previous class like in this way uh, what psi uh, to the power one minus gamma and one minus gamma in a previous class and the latter how a latter part of the class i showed you that if you write the Clara utility function in this way you will get the utility curve which is concave shape so it is just kind of mathematical expression of this kind of graph or this kind of utility curve okay this is uh, nothing uh, very advanced mathematics but defining utility is a advanced mathematical concept so what i uh, try to make uh, the point here that means the expected utility you can measure in this way or but when you are uh, not expected utility you can measure utility in by your own utility function but when I'm saying expected utility, that means if you have outcome like, for example, 10, 50, 100, you can get a utility for this, you can get a utility for this, you can get a utility for this. It has some probability, it has some probability, it has some probability. So when you multiply the probability of getting ten, uh, utility from 10 outcome, and probability of getting utility from 50 outcome and probability of getting utility uh, from uh, 100 outcome, you will get the expected utility number. Expected utility number, I will show you uh, how can you show this in your graph also. So weighted average uh, utility you need to find out. But the matter is that if I ask you, uh, if I tell you, uh, that an individual has utility of 10.5 from investment in Walton and that individual has utility of 8.2 from investment in Singer. If you understand the concept of utility, which one you will prefer to maximize the utility? Walton or Singer? Of course, Walton, because the utility from Walton investment is higher. But matter is that this number, this number or this number in absolute term, that means when you are not comparing, when you are not comparing, this absolute number of utility has no value or abstract meaningless. But when you are comparing the option and you need to make it clear that individual A, individual B. Both of their utility functions are completely different. Both of their utility functions are completely different. You can't compare the utility value of a same investment for investor A and utility of same investment for investor B. You can't compare, these are not comparable. These are not comparable because individual utility functions are different. 
but when the same a single individual is comparing the investment in walton or singer and comparing the utility from investment in two in that case they are giving some decision making number that when uh, you like to maximize your utility uh, or which is a rational thing you will prefer that option which maximizes the utility so let's try to relate uh, why we are learning utility and why we are spending much time on learning the utility the thing is that you already have learned uh, the marquis portfolio story from uh, your uh, another class of portfolio portfolio management okay so marquis portfolio uh, theory is dependent on some assumptions and has given a very straight forward note uh, straight forward statement that is individual prefers the investment which provides higher return given the risk and individual prefers the investment which provides lowest uh, risk given the same level of return so those are the very plain statement from the market portfolio theory what every asset manager tries to maximize or what every asset manager tries to execute or implement for the for their client so that marquis portfolio is based on some utility function uh, that is kind of uh, return it is marquis uh, utility function okay return minus half some risk param risk aversion parameter and this is sigma square so the purpose of introducing this kind of utility function is here because the learning what you will be making in coming classes to maximize your portfolio value to maximize your portfolio return is based on this kind of utility function so every investment that satisfies this utility function is known as efficient portfolio so conceptually we know what we mean by the efficient portfolio but mathematically efficient portfolio are those portfolios which satisfies this kind of uh, this kind of utility function okay so i'm giving you some exercises which are already uh, which are already been solved for you that is to find out the u prime and the u double prime of this utility function and check whether this utility function satisfies the two conditions of utility that is the higher the outcome the higher the utility and when you are rich, getting more and more rich the additional utility from the additional outcome will be lower so it needs to be positive it needs to be negative you need to prove by yourself whether it works or not for this utility function which is the foundation of marquis portfolio theory so let's try to transfer all of this concept what we have learned so far in graphical form uh, we are considering right now uh, two lotteries one lottery has outcome two outcome one is extreme one and the one is zero with some certain probability p for the outcome one and one minus p probability for the outcome zero and we have another lottery in which you get the delta amount of outcome no uncertainty that means you are pretty certain that you will get this amount of outcome for sure so uh let's try to uh do some graphing you are here with me yes sir okay yes sir so we are uh drawing some uh, sorry
in horizontal axis we are representing outcome and in vertical axis we are representing utility let's assume that a person has some utility function that's why it has become possible to uh, present his preferences uh, through some graph if that person didn't have any utility function we could not draw uh, the graph of utility okay so if i assume that uh, for that person has outcome of like this uh, low outcome that means xl can we identify some utility for this outcome here arbitrary so let's assume that this is utility for the low outcome now if i assume that that higher payoff of the same lottery is here and i want to point out where is the utility of this high outcome can anyone tell me uh, where should i point out the utility of higher outcome here here or here upwards upward uh, why sir uh, yeah, uh, outcome of return is going up and the function says it will uh, it, it will go up also okay we already have assumed that the higher outcome you will get the higher utility you will get the total utility okay so if i ask you uh, or if i assume that for example the probability of low outcome is p and the probability of high outcome is 1 minus 1 minus p now if i ask you about the expected outcome of this lottery can anyone tell me where should i write where should i write this expected outcome of lottery x uh, here here or in between xl and xh in between sir in between sure sir maybe maybe no, sir, uh, probably you are taking you are taking all of the possible options you are not remaining option for other people okay uh, mathematically we can write that expected outcome is something uh, probability of low outcome and probability of sorry one minus p probability of high outcome okay so let's assume uh, uh, you are correct that it is in between let's assume that the expected outcome is here i have not told you what is the probability number of the low outcome and the high outcome i have assumed the expected outcome here i think you are clearly seeing my pointer okay so can you tell me uh, from this graph out of the probability number between 0 to 1 what is the probability approximate i'm not wanting to 
uh, give you the precise number by a mathematically inclined person. Uh, I just want to get a rough idea that if I assume that my expected outcome is here, what am approximate amount of probability I have assigned for the low outcome and what amount of uh, approximate probabilities I have assigned for high outcome if the expected outcome is here. Sir, uh, for low outcome, it is more than 50%. And for high outcome, it is uh, less than 50%. Sir. Okay. It, it, it is very closer to uh, low outcome. Shouldn't it be uh, higher than 50%? Anyone? Anyone disagreeing? No opinion. You have told that the probability for high outcome higher than sorry lower than 50 percent or higher than 50 percent probability of high outcome lower than 50 percent lower than 50 percent okay so in that case uh can, can you say that you are assuming like the probability for low outcome like uh, thirty percent something. Uh, for low outcome, it is more than fifty percent. Uh, then I can take eighty or seventy. Now it is right. Yes, sir. Uh, to me. Is it okay? Is there anyone disagreeing here? Otherwise, I will not post it. I will end here. Anyone thinks that the number should be just the opposite? It should be here and it should be here. Okay, I think I have given you adequate time. So I think you all are agreeing and you know very well what's the reason why uh, it should be very high percentage for low outcome and it should be very low percentage for high outcome because uh, as the expected outcome is very nearer to the low outcome, that means more weight has uh, more weight has been transferred for low outcome to this outcome. That's why the probability for low outcome is higher. Okay. Now, if I ask you, uh, what is the utility for this expected outcome? Is it possible to uh, write down numeric uh, write down in functional form and then point out graphically okay let me write down the utility of expected wealth in this way utility from lottery in this way uh, as i have said it is expected You are very familiar with this kind of notation to estimate the weighted average. Okay, so it is the utility of this expected 
uh, outcome of this lottery. Can anyone tell me uh, whether the utility of this uh, expected wealth will be higher than utility from high outcome or lower than low outcome or in between these two? utility from this expected outcome will be lower than this in this area or higher than the utility of high outcome or in between the utility of high outcome and low outcome sir in between sir in between in between so as we don't know what is the exact probability number we can draw a straight line. We can say the utility of expected wealth is here. Can we say? Expected utility From this lottery okay i think i can proceed from here okay now if i tell you and you are very clear that it is a weighted average of a of two uncertain outcome it is the weighted average of two uncertain outcome it is not like that you are getting a uh, low outcome for sure you are getting high outcome for sure rather you are expecting a outcome which is in between low and high outcome. Now, if I give you an offer that I will give you, I will give you an amount equal to exactly this amount, exactly expected wealth you are expecting from playing the lottery. I'm giving you an offer to give a certain amount which is equivalent to this expected number. Would you prefer that amount or you will prefer to stay here to play this lottery? Have you got my question? You sir. want me to repeat? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm now giving you an option to give you exactly this amount, what you are expecting from the lottery for sure. Now, my question is, would you prefer that amount, what I am offering to you and stop playing this lottery? or you will wait for playing the lottery and want to see what is the expected outcome uh, if there is a, if there is a chance that you get the high outcome very close to high outcome you want to wait or you want to stop waiting and you want to take the offer i have given i just have given to you No choice. Sir, I will take your option, sir. Huh? I will take your first option, sir. Okay. Uh, that means you like to take my offer? Yes, sir. Okay. The answer, the, you need to answer in this way. Deal or no deal? You want to take the deal? I will. Yes, sir. I will take the deal, sir. Okay. Why you want to take the deal? Uh, sir, uh, there is a downside risk also. I don't want to take this risk. Okay. That means you expect that you get more happiness by taking deal of this amount equal to this amount. Right? Yes, sir. That means your happiness 
now it's not here your happiness is above of this or below of this for having this deal oh. why you prefer my offer because the utilities are same or utility is different same sir same how same uh, how sure. same you are i uh, you are playing a risky game i have given you offer to stop the risky game and to come up with a deal yes sir you get higher utility or lower or same utility lower utility if the uh, lower sir lower in the sense the jodi eta bere jay upward uh, return ashe that forget sense. about the sense why you are preferring because sir, you have, because yes, you get more utility or less utility the more utility you are utility, preferring sir. because you are getting more utility otherwise you would not prefer my option yes sir got it yes sir if the thing is such that you want to play the game you want to play the game that means you expect that the utility from playing the game would be higher compared to the utility which is to be generated from my offer so that is the second case but i am stick with the first case you are getting more utility from my offer that is the reason why shagor preferred investment income of 1000 from saving certificate can you recall yes sir instead of investing in stock market investing in startup business okay okay now if i like to connect the this is the utility you expect from the expected wealth it is no longer it is no longer expected utility it is it is no longer expected because you are getting a certain amount of utility from the this amount this amount you are getting for certain okay so if i try to if i try to connect this is the concave utility function so why you are preferring here uh, why you are preferring this related to this why i'm getting more utility sir okay a risk reduction because you love to avoid the risk otherwise you would prefer here otherwise you would prefer here you are getting more utility from getting the expected outcome for sure because you want to avoid risk okay so this amount uh, you are getting more utility from a certain outcome compared to outcome which is expected outcome from two uncertain outcome okay so this difference is risk aversion so the question is if you argue that i am not a risk averter i am a risk lover i am a gambler in that case this is not for you rather it for your case it would be just the opposite for risk lover or for risk gambler his utility card would be like this have we got this the dash line have we got the dash line yes sir the dash line is for which person it is for the gambler he get more utility from playing the risky game he get less utility from the certain outcome okay so the thing is that <clears throat> on
almost all individuals not all individuals average individual are of this type average individuals are of this type they get more utility from risk free option compared to risky option that's why when you take financial decision or when you make discount rate you always consider that investors are risk averse they don't love to take risk but how can you convince the investor you can convince the uh, why investor wants to come here because investor comes here they get some risk premium they get some risk premium here so risk premium you know very well is the compensation for for taking the risk so let's try to identify that is it possible to give the investor same utility what he was getting from the expected wealth okay so look at here it is possible that investor get same amount of utility same amount of utility same of what this amount same amount of utility what he was expecting to get from the expected outcome by uh, reducing his outcome to a certain amount i'm not saying that certain amount so what is that certain amount that is uh, if you reduce the outcome by a certain amount that is pi you get an amount at which investor get same utility what he was expecting to get from the expected wealth so what is that amount by which you can convince investor to stay here that is known as certainty equivalent wealth so what is this it is the amount of wealth from which investor get the same amount of utility which he was getting from the expected wealth so how can you convince investor to stay here uh, what is the difference between expected wealth and the certain equivalent that is the risk premium uh, if you stop investor or if you want to stop investor to play lottery you need to offer him at least this amount of wealth which amount certain equivalent amount of wealth so that he will get the same amount of utility what he would get if he played the lottery so that amount is the certain equivalent of wealth okay the thing is that uh, the difference between expected wealth from which the utility are similar to the utility of certain equivalent that difference is the known as risk premium so have you got it how we have related the learning of utility from with the risk premium and the risk aversion concept what we apply to estimate the portfolio risk of individual investor and the institutional investor okay so it is not very uh intuitive unless uh you know all of the stories so you need to revise it a uh, few times and you need to get some examples also to get what we are trying to mean here so so that you will have an idea that 
why investor get more utility from the risk free option and what is the certain equivalent amount of wealth and how risk premium is related to the utility concept of investor and the utility function i already have showed Sir, to uh, you that means the discovers investor get risk premium about it sorry uh, so that means a risk averse investor gets risk premium avoiding risks uh, contradictory no no risk averse investor if you want to if you want to convince risk averse investor to play the risk or to play the lottery you need to give him the risk premium you need to give him the risk premium got the point otherwise he would stay here he would not come from here to here he would stay here he would stay here if he sees that uh, his utility uh, his utility uh, from getting this amount and his utility uh, from getting the expected uh, expected wealth is here in that case uh, he will only come here if you give him the risk premium that's why equity equity provides us more risk premium bond gives us less risk premium and the risk free investment does not give any risk premium okay yes sir now uh, we already have showed you that the these two these two points these two points can only be equal if you subtract the risk premium from the expected wealth and the utility from this amount that means it is the certain equivalent amount the utility from certain equivalent amount and utility from expected wealth will be equal only if this condition satisfied and you know very well risk premium must be a positive number okay and let's conclude our session just by saying two uh, two statements that is the stochastic dominance you uh, i think you already have got the concept of efficient frontier from your portfolio uh, class which is alternatively going on so uh, between asset a and b an individual or an asset asset a is said to be stochastically dominant over asset b if it is found that the risk given the same risk level of asset a and asset b asset a provides higher return than asset b in that case you would say asset a is stochastically dominant over asset b this is known as first order stochastic dominance and second order stochastic dominance is known as between asset a and b if their return are similar you would prefer that asset of which the variance is lower of which the risk is lower or the variance is lower in that case you would say asset a has second order stochastic dominance over asset b because asset a has lower variation in their outcome compared to asset b given the same level of return so this is known as second order stochastic dominance okay